Wow. And I will get to the point. The point? Yes, yeah, so get to the, the point. The point is that everybody needs to come to the recording workshop and do their courses with me. Um, I think we all do. <laughs> it's just and then you'll find out what the hell MIDI is, yeah. which I assumed everyone knows. What does it stand for? MIDI? Yeah. Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And there you have it. And most of the equipment, this is one of the rooms that we use. I've got this room here with eight, seven uh, workstations, and there's another room where we focus more on the audio, audio engineering. That's actually recording sound, bands, and uh, people. But this is more kind of computer orientated. But before, in order to be able to do anything in the studio, you do have to understand the basics. And that's what our foundation course does. It costs £330. There's a maximum of four people in a class. And there are eight sessions, eight three-hour sessions, which are on Tuesday afternoons or Tuesday evenings. And uh, also on alternate Saturdays. Wow. That's uh, handy. Sorry? That's handy. Yeah, well, I did it on alternate Saturdays because I realised that people were coming from quite far away and it's, it was a bit more of a commitment for them to come four Saturdays in a row rather than alternating them. Right. So I, I did that from the very beginning. Mm. We do a whole range of courses. We teach all the individual programmes, Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools uh, and the others, which I can't think of right now. But we also do full-time courses, and that's something that evolved over the years, because they, they were part-time to start off with. Right. And the whole point is I would teach that in the evening, and I'd do my own stuff afterwards, yeah. or, or during the day. Um, mm. But uh, it did evolve, and eventually I started full-time courses. And about two or three years ago, we got accredited by Pearson. So we do uh, B-Tech music production HMD, that's Higher National Diploma, mm. which is an eight, uh, a QCF level 5 uh, qualification. It's the second year of a degree. Yeah, very good. And so you can go into to university. You could use that. Yeah, you could just take another year forward. and finish off your degree yeah. at uni. Absolutely. But we also do RSL, a rock school, and their QCF level 3 course, which is called a Music Practitioner. Uh, yeah. QCF Level 3 Diploma, uh, yeah. uh, you see, I've been completely brainwashed by these two organisations. And you have to speak their language, you know, because, Joy, <laughs> I'm interviewing you. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I, I, I thought that a little while ago. Because <laughs> you told me earlier on that you worked for Pearson for a I while. I did, yes. And that's... I said, do you speak Pearsonese? <laughs> and because it made me laugh. <laughs> it's what it's like. It's another language. Yeah. But anyway, that's our problem. Mm. Uh, what we do is we give people a whole series of assignments that we then assess, etc., uh, etc. Et so you can do a two-year course where you learn everything, and it prepares you to be able to work in a studio, radio, could be film, television, anything to do with sound. But I suppose the main thing there really is that you can get a qualification which is something that parents tend to like. Uh, we do have people coming from all over the world because we are... Uh, Pretty individual organisation. Well, we? yeah, but also we've, we're licensed sponsors. We're Tier 4 licensed sponsors, which is um, uh, controlled by the Home Office. Mm. And it's a nightmare. But... Yeah over the years managed to to get that together so if you're watching this in Australia South Africa Siberia South America Saudi Arabia wherever you can actually come and do our course and it is valid for a tier 4 uh, student visa unfortunately the government keep changing the rules and now they're saying that you can only do up to two years be, uh, below degree level. That may well change because I think the whole industry is going through a bit of a chaos at the moment. Questions from the audience. Do you have any connections with the Colombian uh, Medellin cartels? Well, um, 
Uh, if not, any what? discount on tickets to South Africa? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I did have a dream that I was working for a Colombian cocaine cartel and I was in charge of making sure that they, their outlets had nothing because they were going to be raided. And I don't know why I had that dream. <laughs> <laughs> Pass! Uh, another question, please. <laughs> so, before you started the studio then, what experience had you had before the recording workshop, would you say? Well, predominantly playing in bands, and we played in a couple of bands we ourselves did. together. Mm -hmm. um, I was a partner in a recording studio called Street Level Recordings with Keith Keith mm -hmm. Lubata and Grant Showbiz, mm. um, which lasted about three years and the end of the 70s. Um, and was that like the mobile recording studio? Well, it became a mobile. But it started out. It building. started off actually in a squat in Bristol Gardens right. in the basement. Yeah. And uh, the full recorded there. Um, I did a session with the drummer from Public Image. That was uh, uh, Johnny Rotten's band. Um, and there were various uh, other bands like the um, the What of Moo. Android. 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 Android and Moo. That's right. Yeah. One of whom is watching right now. Yes, uh, so Keith Keith uh, put that together and various other things. And then I think um, it, the building was taken over by people who owned it. So we had to move out and it became right. a, a mobile. Uh, but a very, very, very different scene to what we have now because there's no computers. It was tape to tape. It was tape to tape, real. Yeah. Oh, I've got a great story. We had this eight track recording um, console uh, using one inch tape, and we were st it was starting to slip. <laughs> so uh, the tape was slipping on the reels. Uh, so somebody advised Grant that what he needed to do is to clean the capstan or the, the rubber wheel that grips the tape as it oh, passes yeah. by yeah. Uh, with Jif. Ooh. Okay, so Grant put a whole load of jiff on this rubber wheel and rubbed it and rubbed it and rubbed it and it blew up. It just kind of bubbled and <laughs> was completely ruined. The idea was just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit to get rid of the oxide. <gasps> anyway. Anyway, I think that's yeah. enough, isn't it? Yes, I think that is enough. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. That's good.